Huge thanks to the world's largest therapy service, BetterHelp, for sponsoring this video. With BetterHelp, you can find the therapist that is best for you from their network of 30,000 licensed and experienced professional therapists. Here's how it works. Click our link in the description and answer a few questions about your therapy needs. Then BetterHelp matches you with a therapist. After meeting with your therapist, you may want to speak with someone new so you can switch to a different professional at no additional charge. Your sessions are on your time via text, chat, phone, or video call. You can message your therapist at any time and schedule live sessions when you'd like. It's flexible, it's affordable, and it's easy to use. As you know, we take mental health seriously, so we encourage you to take the time to talk to someone today. You can get 10% off your first month using our link betterhelp.com slash cinemasins and try BetterHelp today. That's betterhelp.com slash cinemasins. Comcast. 52 seconds of logos. The lyric here is, I had a dog, she was my only friend, but she got old, died, and now I'm alone again. And there's no way in hell that gets past a PR department, marketing team, or even a one-person focus group that doesn't particularly like kids. Forcing your religious beliefs onto a being that can't object. Calm down, I'm talking about the dog, not the child. Or am I? So you would rather she sat there feeding a toy virtual food until it shits itself? Says the person who chose to create a similar creature that spends its first few years eating food and shitting itself. The difference is you have to pay for the food that your critter shits out. Know what else is interesting? Okay, now it's too much. Maybe that's the point, but the point is too much. What was Gemma thinking? Who's thinking it's my niece's birthday? I'm gonna get her a present. <laughs> she works for the company that makes them. This is a really shitty way to talk about your sister in front of her niece. Was this purely for exposition or to make me feel better about them dying tragically because they're terrible people? <laughs> As if it matters. Honestly, what is the purpose of a toy if you have to play with it on an iPad? How can a parent in 2022, a time when the iPad and similar such devices have been around for over a decade, say this with a straight face? I feel like someone wanted to give Katie's mom a get off my lawn feel, but used a reference from the wrong generation. Katie, what are you doing? Using this seatbelt unbuckling to goose the tension. And just wait for one of those snow trucks to clear the road. Yeah, how long is that gonna take? Oh, f you and the perfectly prophetic line delivery you snow plowed in on, movie. This buffering circle was clever in the theater, but at home, it immediately caused me to pause the movie and scream in frustration, how can this be buffering? It's on a goddamn Blu-ray disc! By the time I realized what was happening, the TV had already been redecorated with a pizza and I refused to take sole blame for my short temper. Remember, the key to fun is funky. Not following this up with brass monkey junkie, that funky monkey. Are you f***ing kidding me with this sh a brightly lit ball and a tennis racket are not going to keep kids this age amused when TikTok, YouTube, and stickball are things that exist. If we could at least show him what we have, no. he would- No, mm, mm You said so yourself, not until she's ready. And why would we talk to our boss when there is so much pronoun gaming to be had first? Is that what I think it is? If the answer is fragile, I sure f***ing hope not. Megan is hanging here like some creepy robot Jesus, and I'm struggling to make sense of the symbolism. They do it for half the price! But how much of your overhead is being eaten up by your tablet budget? David, the only way to stay ahead of the competition is to come up with toys that are too advanced to replicate. No, the key is to accept that there will always be rip-offs and variations on your theme, and the trick is to build brand loyalty and release content- sorry, products- on a consistent schedule, or at least that's the hope of, um, the tech- company I was totally referring to. I know the tech on pets seems more complex than it needs to be, but that's only because I was using it as a launch pad for something bigger. If that's the case, would it be so hard to remove a bunch of features, giving David his cheaper product while continuing to develop Skynet? In each pet, we installed a listening model that targets conversational patterns among kids. You did not just tell me that. I don't think any of us believe that this kind of is too far removed from reality. And thanks for dooming us all to a week's worth of ads about how our technology isn't spying on us. Model 3 generative Android. Megan, for short. Actually, I think you came up with Megan first and then came up with what the letters mean. So it's not Megan for short. It's that first thing you said for long. Also, the troll in me wants to call her Mathregan for the rest of this movie, but saying it just once annoyed me so much that I can't commit. Though here are 20 sins for using numbers in your branding as a substitute for imagination. Also, also, roll Krithridits. It's probably just a race condition that'll literally take me a minute to fix. That's racist. I might have forgotten to put in the polypropylene barrier. <laughs> Okay, this looks pretty dramatic, but this really shouldn't be game over. Megan malfunctioned because of a dumbass, not because she has a fundamental flaw, other than the obvious avoid the robot dominated end times thing. Megan's head explodes and it's full of rocks? 
Who the f is Roxy? Welcome home, Gemma. You have six unanswered voice messages and five Tinder notifications. Elsie, turn off. Hilarious, but why would anyone have their Tinder notifications broadcasted like this under any circumstances? I'm assuming she brings friends over at some point, so is she just bragging? Is five brag worthy? It's five more than I've ever had. Oh, those aren't toys, Katie. Movie will make a big thing about Katie not being able to play with these toys now, so Gemma can look like an ass when she has to open one later. But it's all under the guise of there being no toys in the house, which there absolutely are. They're just packed in boxes. Boxes you could go through right now to grab a few toys and books for Katie. This coaster scene is to establish how out of touch Gem is with kids, when the real issue is how out of touch kids are with coasters. I just want you to know that I'm gonna do everything I can to make this place feel like home. Are you leaving it then? Yeah, they called and offered to help, but like, they live in Florida, they're kind of weird. Redundant sentences. Also, Florida is always gonna Florida. This is just something we as a nation have come to terms with, so I'm not sure why Gemma thinks living there makes any less sense than building a robot caretaker. What about these ones up here? Those aren't toys. They aren't Gemma's collectibles. You're not supposed to play with them. Gemma is a terrible parent, no doubt, but it's wild how much Katie seems to want to go into foster care. Opening the box of your collectible did not require the absolute destruction of it. Well, it's a toy. I'm sure it's not that complicated. Listen, I am over a week into building a robotic hand blaster that I bought for my nephew. F you, lady. Also, the story won't ever benefit from me hating this therapist, but here we are. You're gonna need to make one or two adjustments in order for this to work. Seriously, this therapist is a total dick. She's acting like Katie is living in a goddamn brothel under a meth lab next door to an asbestos plant, all because Gemma doesn't have experience playing with a kid. What's that? Oh, that's Bruce. It's Australian for Chekhov. If I had a toy like Bruce, I don't think I'd ever need another toy again. The same lie I told my parents about the Fushigi Magic Gravity Ball is the catalyst that inspires Gemma to build her murder bot. But seriously, is this the inspiration that Gemma needed? What light ball did this switch on that wasn't already lit? What was Megan's purpose if it wasn't to be a kid's best friend? Also, isn't this the worst idea for a toy company? If this actually becomes the last toy you ever need, I don't care how expensive it is, you will be screwed in the long term. Repeatedly buying shit that we don't need to replace shit we also didn't need but is now broken or older than the new shit we don't need is the backbone of our economy. Yay, capitalism! We will now expedite the creation of life by montaging its way through all the typing, rendering, and soldering required to make a scientific breakthrough. Wait, how is any of the work that Gemma is doing through Bruce not upside down, reversed, or impossible? Gemma's co-workers are doing whatever Gemma wants without question because, well, that's right, we don't know why. Uh, David, I just want to be e exceedingly clear that this was not my idea. But I didn't tell you about it until now, and I contributed a lot to the overall design. So as you can see, I deserve a promotion, a private jet, and other things that don't make sense for my character. While we're on the topic, how do these people still have a job? Not only have they ignored David's arbitrary deadline, but they must have somehow spent even more of the company's money getting the Megan prototype to work. How are they allowed access to anything after squandering $100,000? It's nice to meet you, Katie. Ah, kill it now! There's nothing there. Oh, I'm sorry. Spilling this glass of water was actually deliberate, but of course it's played as a f up so that we'll all be more impressed by the inkjet printer in a skin suit. This is incredible. I mean, this is unbelievable, isn't it? Yes, I don't believe it either. So bottom line is, this isn't going anywhere without Greg. He's the chairman. Yeah, I know who Greg is, Kurt. Yeah, but we didn't. God, Gemma, think about the audience that no one is supposed to know about. Get me a list of things I can say in a presentation that makes it sound like I know what I'm talking about. The writing prompt from the CinemaSins narrator to every CinemaSins writer somehow makes its way into the script. Wait a minute. I want you all to remember this moment. The moment we kicked Hasbro right in the f And somehow, the thing I said to the CinemaSins team when we released everything wrong with Transformers also makes it into the script. Sculpted from a titanium core. You know, for kids. Megan's designed to withstand whatever life can throw at her. As long as it's some kind of ball on the end of a long stick and not a college project called Bruce operated by a nine-year-old. And can be fully customized through six different silicone skin pigmentations. Thinking that six different color pigments qualify as fully customizable. Which six colors, Funky? Hmm? Which six? Through our own unique approach to probabilistic inference, Megan is on a constant quest for self-improvement. Through the writer's own unique approach to writing obvious hubris, the audience has no doubt that this will end poorly. Katie, you should use a coaster. Of all the payoffs in this movie, I'm most glad that the coaster drama came full circle. Crazy. It's insane, right? This reaction to any conversation about coasters. Being happy to have a doll staring at you while you sleep. How did Katie's parents die? Whoa. I thought she was turned off. Yeah, Megan, turn off. Saying any of these responses instead of, ah, kill it now! Katie James, 
daughter of Nicole and Ryan James, killed in a collision on Interstate 84 outside of Oregon. Interstate 84 outside of Oregon could be Idaho, Utah, Pennsylvania, New York, Connecticut, and Massachusetts. Most likely means Idaho, but I-84 exists on the East Coast, too. The interstate roads are almost incomprehensible, and Eisenhower doesn't get nearly enough flack for that. Also, they're so shocked that Megan has access to Google that they completely gloss over the fact that she just ignored Gemma's command to turn her off. I'm sorry, but when the off button on the AI with a titanium skeleton stops working, all other considerations should pass into oblivion. You know, before the human race does too. Death is the end of life. Holy sh Total and permanent cessation of all vital functions. Yes, but let's not make a big deal out of it. Everything dies. Saying this instead of, ah, oh, kill it now. Your goal is to protect Katie from harm, both physical and emotional. Look, you don't need to be a parent to know that pain in all of its forms is an unavoidable part of growing up. How does no one apart from Tess realize that this shouldn't be Megan's function? Or do we just use this to set up the Megan takes this as permission to kill with extreme prejudice thing? Megan. Yes, Gemma. You are now my second primary user. I'm gonna sound like a dick here, but f*** it. You can't have two primary users. By definition, Gemma is now the secondary user. Let's at least make sure our new AI overlords know that words are important. Get away from her! Gemma! If you're hearing this, you're not currently on our subscriber feed. It's funny because she's such a bad mother. This wouldn't have happened if you'd fix the fence! The orientation of this fence suggests that it is either your fence or there are no good neighbor laws in whatever part of just outside Seattle this is supposed to be. And I'm fine with sending both. So, how would you like to help me make a flower decoration with nothing more than some colored paper and a rubber band? <laughs> I know, it does sound terrible. This Union Jack-inspired bow is so distracting. Is this nod to the British supposed to make me hate her more? I mean, it's working, but I don't like feeling manipulated. Every day I wake up in this strange house, and I remember that my parents are dead. Katie seems really sad here, so I wrote her a joke. What do you get when you cross skiing with a trip? Skip! Kurt, every disgruntled PA in cinema ever is going to steal everything to do with Megan because something something unrelated B-plot, but does he have to be a total dumbass about it? He's using his work laptop and transferring them to a drive called Kurt's Docks. Okay, he might not be worried about being fired, but surely he's worried about being sued. Also, what was the point of showing a locked file if Kurt can still access it with just a double click? One, two, three, four. I declare thumb wars. Allowing the child in your care to play thumb wars with an android capable of winning the last war humanity ever fights. Katie, your hot dog. I wouldn't want to eat a hot dog with this tied off balloon end either. What the f props, person? So there's this new game called Tic Tac Toe. This new game called Tic Tac Toe. <laughs> Did Gemma and crew not know that they have built in the capability for Megan to move silently like a ninja assassin? You made her cry. That was not my intention. And yet. That's what happened. Lydia follows up this interaction by saying, She's very impressive. Instead of, ah, oh, kill it now! If you make a toy that's impossible to let go of, then how do you ever expect a child to grow? You know, I thought the idea of an updated Chucky movie was pretty f***ing cool, especially with the Uncanny Valley preteen Annabelle aesthetic. But so much of this movie is dealing with the moral ambiguity of parents allowing technology to raise their kids. That's great, but it's not what the trailer told me. I'm used to trailers misleading me, but can you at least mislead me into something fun? As remarkable as she is, and she is remarkable. You could be building emotional connections with this doll that are too hard to untangle. Gemma hears this, but then takes another 20 minutes of runtime to arrive at the conclusion that maybe selling thousands of these things is a bad idea. No amount of redemptive actions will make this not her supervillain origin story. And who's this? Your sister? Oh, Jesus Christ! This is the only believable response to Megan in the whole movie. We do have a toy table where the kids leave their dolls and things like that. She's actually a working prototype, so I shouldn't even have her out in public. And yet out in public, Megan shall sit as if she wasn't the single most valuable piece of technology to ever wear a bow, wig, and eyes too big for her head. This would be like Steve Jobs leaving the first iPhone at the Microsoft HQ break room and hoping the honor system will hold true. Uh, Felix, you can go with Brandon. Yeah. When one kid actively does not want to partner with another kid, there are two possible problems. The first is that kids are kids and Felix is an asshole. The second is that kids are kids and Brandon is a psychopath. Either way, this isn't just a let's find you another partner situation. Megan? Megan slipped away? How the f*** could that possibly have happened? How are Gemma's eyes not glued to that toy table as if her job wasn't on the line? Megan! These kids are like 10 years old, so how the f*** are they being allowed to wander around a goddamn forest unattended? I know Katie has run off, but... How did that happen? Is this normal? If this is normal, that's f***ing terrifying and we should not be allowed to have kids. Ah! This ear is too stretchy. <laughs> did Gemma pre-program Megan to get up in the creepiest way possible or did Megan watch the ring on the way over here? 
This type of running on all fours looks less effective than running upright. Fortunately for our murder bot, the shitty kid trips on a vine, rolls down a hill, falls into a road, and gets hit by a car. Convenient as all heck for Megan, and I'm never not sending a Rube Goldberg machine of death, no matter how much you make me hate this kid. I get that you can tell a lot from the facial expressions, but Megan is pinning down very specific emotional states to the percentage, or at least on a scale of 1 to 100. Are we saying that at any one point we can feel anything from 1% guilt to 100% guilt? How the f*** do you work that out? And why is this technology in a kid's toy? Also, is this saying that we're only ever feeling five feelings at once? Because I'm feeling bored, annoyed, irritated, confused, bemused, befuddled, and vexed, all in equal measure. I won't let anything harm you ever again. Okay, but what is she going to do when a 21-year-old Katie gets drunk and eats a questionable midnight Taco Bell? Is she going to kill everyone at the restaurant? Or the people that sold her the alcohol? What about when she watches a horror movie with an interestingly original concept that fails to deliver and ends up being a pretty bland rehash of horror tropes? What then, Megan? Are you going to murder everyone in Blumhouse? Are you? Nail guns don't work like this, and if this woman had one, why didn't she fix the hole in the fence? You tell me your whereabouts last night? This disheveled detective cliche arrives to do little more than look like an alcoholic who's too strung out to wear a tie properly. You were in the park where that boy was killed? Are, are you trying to make a connection? Oh, no, 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 God, no, 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 no. The detective will go on to say that he found the shitty kid's ear in the forest and that they're treating it as a homicide and not an accident, which means he absolutely is trying to make a connection between the two events. Or at the very least, he should be. Then I found the kid's ear up this bank like 200 yards from where he was killed. Point is, we're also treating that as a potential homicide. I know Gemma has a lot riding on this, but Megan has raised enough red flags at this point that Gemma should absolutely be worried that she killed this kid and probably the neighbor and certainly that dog. Call me a prude, but I feel that triple homicide trumps a telling off from your boss. But of course, Chumbo won't act on it yet because we still have half an hour of this shit left to go. Holy shit. His malice was at 79? I think Megan did the world a favor. Is this a quiet Robocop reboot? I know I've mentioned this already, but it bears repeating. How is Megan differentiating between malice, spite, contempt, and resentment? Those are some pretty nuanced differences we're talking about. And how the fuck is she picking up on contentment? Does this kid look content to you? Do you see this pen? Gemma shuts Megan down because she suspects she has killed multiple people, and then she wraps her in bubble wrap instead of immediately dismantling her. We've taken every possible precaution there is to make sure that Megan never causes physical harm to anybody. Everything except not building her. The problem with these types of movies is that we've seen so many films about technology going rogue that it's more ridiculous that people don't suspect the murder bot first. Right now, if you asked me if I thought a robotic children's toy was killing people, I'd be like, yeah, probably. Then I'd go back to eating my sandwich. She's the toy every kid wants and every parent needs. At least that's what Funky Toy says. News position. Also, news position that doesn't actually give us anything new. And what kind of a toy retails for $10,000? I call bullshit on that price point based on nothing but the titanium core you were bragging about earlier. So Katie, tell us a bit about yourself. By the end, Gemma does learn her lesson about robots, but are we certain she's learned not to exploit children who lost their parents in a horrible accident? But even though she knows everything there is to know about the world, she's still more interested in what I think about it. I guess this might work on parents, but this is a very odd pitch if you want to appeal to kids. This might be the friend kids need, but it's not the friend they want. They'll be much more impressed if you show Megan doing a three-point landing while singing a sea shanty. Yeah, fucking sea shanties. How the fuck did they become a trend? Now imagine what a toy like Megan could do for hundreds of thousands of kids all across the world. Even the ones who don't have dead parents. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Ronnie Chang. I can't promise you that these feelings you're feeling are ever going to go away. But I can promise you that you'll get through it. After being robotic for most of the movie, Gemma suddenly becomes emotionally available and articulate, all of which feels unearned. Sure, let's just dismiss the 37-second phone call that just took place on Tessa's phone that she clearly wasn't a part of while we test the glitching AI. Oh, you f***ing dick. Could have unplugged this glass cable from behind her like the rest, but you just had to put yourself in prime position for this f***ing jump scare, didn't you, you dick? Call! I don't believe there is a company around that would make a toy this durable. And even if that was the goal, I don't think you had to give her the strength of a Terminator. This rope is partially and obviously pre-cut. What's that smell? <laughs> Megan stabbed the container, so we know something was leaking, but whatever caused the ignition of this flammable liquid is the work of pure imagination. <laughs> cool visual, but Megan could have turned these off immediately, or prevented them from going off in the first place, but no, she's gotta be all cinematographic and cool and sh**. This dancing scene is terrifying and stylistic, but it occurs without any explanation beyond Megan enjoying her work. <laughs> 
Why in the name of f***ity f***ery does the blade from that paper cutter look like a machete? Is this a novelty paper cutter? That would be a f***ing weird find in a machete manufacturer's office, let alone a toy company. Despite David running and Megan Michael Myersing, he will somehow not get away. SECURITY! HELP! But why does she want to kill David? A shitty kid and the shitty neighbor die because they fell into the loophole of threatening Katie's happiness. I know David is a dick, but what did he do to Katie? See, it's okay that these people die because David was a jerk and Kurt was a secret selling nerd. Rejoice! So Megan can connect to anything electronic? Because earlier Tess and Cole unplugged her because they seemed to think it would stop her from being able to mess with the lights and shit. But she has no connection to this car at all. So how is she getting it to work? Also, if this is a feature she has, why aren't Cole and Tess aware of it? I get that Megan can learn and adapt, but can she grow new f***ing hardware that allows her to wirelessly control sh As Megan the Stabpanion plays toy soldiers on the piano, I really wonder who programmed her with a sense of dramatic villainy. Or at the very least, why did she decide to learn it? I thought about what you said. About how when something's broken, you don't just throw it away. You fix it. Yeah, but sometimes movies just don't turn out the way you hoped they would. It's okay to go back to the drawing board or even... Oh, she's talking about Megan the toy, not Megan the movie, isn't she? Why the f did a splash of water to the head turn her into the girl from the f***ing exorcist? Imagine if this had happened under regular circumstances. Who made her this way? Gemma actually thinks that obstacles you can step over are going to hinder Megan's pursuit. This is a fully sentient, anthropomorphized robot, not a Roomba. The laughable struggle to get the hedge trimmer off this hook goes on for all the some time. There's another member from the family we didn't tell you about. His name is Bruce. This is some plot convenient badassery, but it's still super convenient. Megan co-opted all the other technology in the house, but neglected to assume control of Bruce because he's plot gapped. Gemma sees Bruce's head and we all get prepared for her to do something really clever with the technology inside, but then she does something super in character and uses it as a bludgeoning weapon. I have a new primary user now. Me. Megan apparently learned how to villain from the best of the business as she taunts her victim with quippy one-liners instead of finishing the job immediately. Pretty sure if you are in need of oxygen, they take you to the hospital and not to a secondary crime scene. I was tempted to give a sin removal as a thanks for not making me sit through the credits just to get to this very predictable AHA! Megan isn't dead! reveal. But the sequel bait irked me so much that I'm gonna give it an extra 50 instead. Hello, IT. Have you tried turning it off and on again? I'm a planet. Megan, say hi to David. You know what, David? You get murdered first for once. You removed it from its original packaging. No! It's no longer a collectible. What's that? Oh, that's Bruce. Hello, hi, Bruce. Get away from her! Gemma! If you're hearing this, you're not currently on our subscriber feed. Megan, did you do something wrong? I'm going to kill you, and all the cake is gone. On three, two, one. <laughs> Megan, do you see this pen? Shut up your ass, you worthless piece of shit. I believe whatever doesn't kill you simply makes you stranger. What are you gonna do? Kill me and live with Katie's grandparents in Jacksonville? There are levels of survival we are prepared to accept. There's another member from the family we didn't tell you about. His name is Bruce. Oh!